Hey guys, welcome back. You are now on week 17 of cycle three. We're still doing chemistry and doing these cool kind of magic experiments every week. Our word of the week this week is compound. If you've not already talked about compound, um, compounds prior to this, this will be a good week to just bring it up and expand our knowledge base, our understanding of molecules and atoms. And so a compound, first of all, we know atoms make up molecules. Molecules are when there's more than one atom present such as in oxygen is O2. It has two oxygen elements there. So it is a molecule. Compound molecules or compounds are when you have more than one type of atom present, like in water. We have H2O, you have hydrogen and oxygen. And so that is a compound molecule, much like compound words or compound sentences and essentials, um, two independent clauses coming together and making one thing, same thing with atoms and molecules. Two different atoms or elements coming together, two or more, I should say, could be a whole bunch of them, coming together and creating something new through that chemical reaction we talked about last week. So most of the molecules that we have been using up to this point are compound molecules. Um, and so that is kind of expanding our knowledge base there. Today, we're going to be testing two compounds, um, iodine and starch. Um, so some background research or some background information you want to give them is one, tell them about compound molecules because that's important to understand. Two, you want to get, tell them what starch is. So ask, you know, if people know about starch, have they heard about that in health foods or in diets? Um, heard their parents talk about starches in food. Um, so starch is a storehouse for carbohydrates, particularly a long line of glucose. And so it is considered a complex carbohydrate. Simple sugars are glucose or fructose, other sugars that are simple. Um, they're not as long and complex as starch. Uh, complex carbohydrates generally are considered more healthy. They take more for our body to break down and so we're not, we don't store them as fat quite as easily as we do simple sugars. Um, and they don't spike our blood sugar as high as simple sugars. And so today's test is, um, other thing for background before I get there, background research. When chemists study all these elements and atoms, in order to categorize them, they study different characteristics of them. So they look at their physical properties they um, look at their mass. They also look at reactivity, which is how one element or molecule or compound reacts with another. And then they can help classify it based on how these compounds or how molecules interact or react when they're combined together, what happens to them. And so today we are studying um, the reactivity of iodine compound versus starch, which is that compound of glucose molecules that we talked about. So we're gonna do a test on six different items. And so we've got a slice of apple, bread, cracker, paper, sugar, and cheese. Um, as you can see, I've already done the test and I'll tell you why in just a minute. So our materials are all those samples, iodine, which I'm going to give each of my tutors in a plastic cup I'll go around and squirt you a little bit so you have it, so we can all share the one iodine, and an eyedropper. So you can put one drop on each specimen. And so I would then, you know, start with one, start with the cracker and say, okay, hypothesis, who thinks the cracker is gonna react? When iodine reacts to the presence of starch, it will turn bluish purple, kind of a dark color. Um, dark blue purple versus staying brown would be the negative, no starch present. Um, and so raise your hands, I would do the cracker. And then, um, then same thing, take a hypothesis for um, the bread and the apple and the cheese and the sugar and go around for each one. This is a tutor demonstration only. Um, iodine is toxic, so we don't want any kids touching um, 
or eating sampling our samples here. And it also stains. And so you don't want um, it to get on your clothes or on the church carpet or anything else. So to your demonstration only. Um, and that's okay because they get to interact with seeing each one. I went ahead and did it ahead of time because in, in practicing this or seeing what would happen, the um, it was interesting and a learning experience. Crackers um, are supposed to be reactive. And because we know, I generally think crackers are more of a simple carbohydrate than a complex one. I found that true with our experiment. So um, even wheat thins did a little bit better than others and turning kind of a darkish blue, but it took about five to 10 minutes before it reacted. Um, this is an organic unbleached flour cracker and it reacted a little faster. So it did react, but it's definitely not a great blue purple. So there's definitely not a high content of starch, even though the crackers did react this is a little kind of the same thing, an organic, um, you know, basic little social cracker thing. And it has a little bit of blue in it, but mostly brown. And so I tried different ones trying to get that great blue color and it just um, didn't happen in my experiment. So you may be able to find and test other crackers that have a higher whole grain content and see if they are more complex, like they say they are and if they react to the iodine. Um, bre the bread, pleasingly enough, um, turned a great blue. I make my own bread. So this is made out of ground whole grain um, flour. So I was pleasantly um, surprised to see that it reacted right away. And so it is a complex carb. Starch is present. An apple stayed brown. Now you would think, well, an apple has, doesn't that have fiber and good stuff in it? And it does, but fruit um, as a whole, so plants utilize starch um, quite a bit, but they utilize it a lot when they're in their growing set. So early on in their baby phase, um, they, in the photosynthesis process, produce starch and then utilize that again as energy to keep growing. As a fruit and particularly matures, that complex carb turns to simple sugars and that's why they're sweet. And so if you eat a very unripened apple, it's super tart, probably has a higher starch content, um, but when you let it mature, that turns to simple sugar. And so it does not react because it now has simple sugars, not complex carbs in it. Cheese obviously did not react. It's more of a protein, um, some dairy in there, but no good starch or complex carb. Simple sugar, white sugar did not react. Um, same reason, simple sugar. Now paper was also an interesting one. Um, so the book says to use notebook paper, um, which I did, two different notebooks, two different thicknesses, and got no reaction. Um, however, then I used printer paper and got a great reaction, turned a great dark blue color. So back even with Gutenberg's printing press, throw that in there, um, they use starch to coat the paper um, and to help in the printing process. And so a lot of paper early on actually had a high starch content. Um, now, obviously, our notebook paper does not have a high starch content, at least in my testing. Um, but the printer paper, which definitely is a different consistency, definitely a different purpose, had a higher starch content. Um, so you could test different kinds of papers and see, but for me, that's what worked. And so for our purposes, because we want to see reactivity in some of them, we will use printer paper um, to get that nice color. So you can talk about Gutenberg um, and how they utilize starch early on, even in his time. Um, the other thing about paper is that obviously it's made from wood. Um, wood has a high cellulose content. When that is chemically broken down in the process of making paper, it releases starch. One of the, the products of that is starch. And so there should be some level of that, um, but maybe our paper is made from other things these days. Don't know. Um, so that was what we got. So then um, sum it up, again, your analysis of it, and again, remind them. So why did, in this reactivity experiment, 
that some react to the iodine and some didn't. It tests the starch compound molecule versus compound molecule and did it react or not. So we would be able to categorize some of these um, objects into um, a reactivity even um, chart to help categorize them. All right, have fun, compounds.